Hey guys, it's Louise here and welcome back to my channel. So this is the second part of my Outlaws video. As I said in the previous one, originally I was planning to make it one full video, but it ended up being a little bit too long and I decided it would be much better if I split it up into two. So if you haven't seen, the first video has a little bit of an introduction and then it goes into accessibility options. So if you're interested in that, highly recommend going to watch that. So I just want to talk now about my experience with the game before I get into your questions. I am the kind of person who loves open world games. I like to explore. While I was playing, I was told to stop exploring and play a little bit more of the mission because I just, I was just too distracted and too immersed by the environment that I forgot about the main mission that I was supposed to be trying out. Um, so I managed to get back on track, but the world is huge. At least Oshara is what I discovered is such a big planet. It's so easy to just get lost in the moment. It's very easy to get distracted by side missions, mini games, such as the back, which I played my first game of and I thought that was very fun. Petting animals, hearing rumors, listening into other people's conversations feeder races which i personally didn't experience myself but i know a lot of other people did which i will probably not do very good in but it's gonna be fun to try it out anyway and just looking at the visuals of this game it is beautiful and it just feels like star wars i personally love the relationship between kves and nyx i think they work very well together and i love the fact that we have a companion that we must make use of it's very similar to things like Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor where you have BD1 as your sidekick and you have to make use of him for health or for scanning and learning new information. Nyx is very important to the gameplay. It's very difficult to play without, which I discovered. I kind of forgot that I could make use of him during gameplay and I was trying to do all these missions by myself, forgetting that he was right there. He can interact with different things in the environment. He can shut down alarm systems, he can distract enemies, he can attack enemies, and he can recover items for you that you cannot access yourself. And he's just absolutely freaking adorable. I think my favorite aspect of the game is definitely the syndicate aspect. I really enjoy the fact that you do separate missions for syndicates that you are maybe wanting more approval with, you get to fight against the ones that you have less approval with. And it's not even just in missions either. You can come across their territory, their land. And if you step one foot in their land and they see you, all hell breaks loose and they will be after you. So you have to make sure you can either sneak up on them or that you have a very easy escape. Which also I will say you can call your speeder to you so you don't have to run and find it you won't lose it basically like i might have done myself i might have lost my speeder and then i was told i could call it and that was wonderful that's a great little feature that also i guess helps with accessibility like i was speaking about too we didn't get a huge amount of time in space however i really enjoyed the dog fighting i enjoyed just flying through space it felt very very similar to Starfighter, if you're going to compare it between the other Star Wars space games, you've got Squadrons, you've got Battlefront 2, Starfighter, and it is very much more like Starfighter. It's very basic, it's very easy to use. There's a lot of spinning, which is pretty good trick, honestly. Um, and there is a lot of obstacles as well, but again, you can turn the obstacle clashing off and it's just it's fun i love space i love flying through space you get to fly your ship and you get to go towards the planet where you want to land in you get to go through hyperspace take off you land it is so much fun and i can't wait to experience way more of that one thing i do also enjoy is if you want to upgrade say your speeder or your blaster you can do missions where you get those upgrades for doing those missions and they're not difficult missions they're just there to help you in your journey with getting better parts. There are some stores that you can buy items from with in-game credits of course and there may be some missions that you get the chance to steal some parts from certain syndicates which doesn't always go down very well but you know if you're good at stealth then you might get through it pretty easily. I however did not. <laughs> 
The game does have a lot of climbing and vaulting involved. However, there are settings which I've explained to make this easier for you so you don't fall, so that you can auto grab onto ledges. I don't know how much of the game requires you to do this. The parts that we played, it was very heavy in this kind of traversal. However, it's fun. It's not stressful and it does have its little challenges with timing, with getting the right area to jump to. It's all about learning. It's all about the process. <laughs> so now I'm going to get into some of your questions and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Some questions I physically cannot answer because I either do not know the answer to them or I am unable to talk about them or unable to show sections of the game about that, such as the maps, the menus, that kind of thing. So unfortunately, I cannot talk about those. However, there is quite a few talking points that I do have that I'm excited to tell you guys about. So the first question was, did you get to test it on PC or on console? I personally chose Xbox. We had a choice. I will link you guys to some other people who played it on PC so you can get their perspectives such as Kyle Katarn, As A True, Arix Gaming, and Star Wars Explained. I'll link all of their videos in the links below. And also, Ruthless Night Sister was also on Xbox, um, so I really recommend checking out her videos too, because they will go a lot more in depth than mine probably will. I played on Xbox because that is my preferred console, either Xbox or PlayStation. I am a console person. That's just who I am. I find it more fun and enjoyable and a lot less stressful. My experience was basically just the same as any other console game, really. It was pretty much standard. There was no stuttering. There was no, like, frame drops or anything. There was nothing really that stood out. There was a couple of moments here and there where I feel like they need to polish up on some of the cutscenes. Um, however, I'm not sure if that's just a console problem or if that's the game in general or because it's, like, not the full build yet. I'm not entirely sure, but I find the controls on Xbox were very easy to use, and I've always felt like controller in general is better for dogfights, um, so that really helped me out as well. But overall, it was a good experience. It's, again, it's, it's an Xbox, you know, it's not going to be the most outstanding graphics that you'll find on PC, but again, that's just my preferred way of playing, so yeah, it wasn't, wasn't bad at all. The next question is just a basic question about me. Will I be streaming it? Yes, I will. I will be streaming this game as soon as it's available and I will be trying to get through the entire game, trying to maybe trying to get through all the side quests. I would like to 100% this game. So yes, I will be streaming this on twitch.tv slash louisejulie and the VODs will be uploaded to my second channel, LJ Gaming, I think. Louise Julie Gaming. I'll post the link below. Um, and any sort of specific reaction highlights will most likely go on this channel. What timeline slash era is this game set in? So this game is set between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So the Empire is at its strongest, they're at their peak, the worlds are crawling with stormtroopers, death troopers, you name it. It is very terrifying, um, but also very exciting. You can get a wanted level from the Empire as well, which I'm going to be honest, I'm not ready for. But I did have some little, little toss ups with the Empire and I got to steal some of their loot and that was pretty fun. I don't know how much that affected my wanted level because I'm not sure if they contacted anybody. But I know that in the game that will affect your relationship with the Empire. <laughs> is the world immersive with NPCs, locations and quests? The world is incredibly immersive. You can walk through the areas, you can walk through the towns, the cantinas, and it is so full of life. There are so many people, there are so many different species, there are so many conversations that you can listen in on, you can talk with people, there are shops that you can get things from, there's plenty to interact with, and it feels so immersive. When it comes to locations, we only got to visit two planets. I am not entirely sure how many planets or how many locations we'll, we will be able to visit. However, there is fast travel to get across the big areas of the map. There are plenty of quests on your way as well. You'll see rumors, you'll see little stop points where you can, go to, you can get out of your speeder, you can talk to people, or you can even find random strangers on the street and they will ask you to do a mission for them for money or they will just ask you straight up for money. You can reject, you can accept, and you can just go about your day really. But the town areas specifically are very crowded, not overcrowded, 
but they are crowded to the point where it feels like it's a real place and the people are again talking amongst themselves they're walking around doing stuff they also seem to have pretty decently long idol animations as well like i never really saw anyone i was never really standing around anyone long enough to see them just like repeating themselves or anything um so yeah it's really interesting to just kind of watch everyone do their own little things it's just really fun to see honestly are there any hints to other star wars media Yes, there is plenty of hints to other Star Wars media. It is very immersive. It feels like you're in that exact era. The planet Kojimi is already from Star Wars canon, along with Fathiers. So there is a mini game you can play where it's instead of horse racing, it's Fathier racing. And you can bet on which Fathier you think is going to win. And we have seen Fathier from the sequels. And honestly, I loved them so much. I love those little space horses. So I'm really glad they're in there. There's plenty of Orabesh written everywhere. There are people speaking Hatties, and I'm sure there's other languages in there that you'll hear people speaking. There are so many species that you'll recognize. And also the games such as Sabak is very popular within Star Wars. And there are gonna be a lot of characters in this game that you will recognize. I will not spoil any. But if you've seen the trailers, you will know exactly which characters those are. So there is plenty of nods and references from the small section of the game that I played to other Star Wars media, and it's really, really fun. There's also gonk droids, and that makes me very, very, very happy. There's also animals and creatures that you'll recognize, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But yes, there is a lot of nods to Star Wars. Is there environmental destruction? There is plenty of environmental destruction. Most specifically, the one that I saw the most was explosive barrels, which you can either shoot to explode, or I'm pretty sure Nyx can set them off as well. There is also the option to uh, turn on or off alarms. There are ion blasters that you can use with the environment. There's plenty of distractions that you can use as well specifically Nyx. He can scan the environment and interact with other objects and he can attack the enemies himself. I'm not entirely sure just how much environmental destruction there will be, how many things you can take advantage of, because again, I only played a small part of the game, but from what I saw, there was plenty of explosive barrels. So honestly, that's, that's what I'm here for. I love explosions. I know it's meant to be stealthy, but you can't, you can't deny a good explosion sometimes, right? Just don't be like me and accidentally get caught up in one of the explosions because I it, I don't recommend. It's not a good idea. Is there a photo mode? Yes, there is. I did not get to experience it. I did not try it out. However, I did see in the menu that there is going to be a photo mode. So I am very excited to try that out and I will be using that quite a lot. For anyone who watches my streams, you'll know I am a sucker for photo mode. So I'll be testing that out as soon as the game releases on August 30th. Can you pet Nyx or other creatures? I am so excited to tell you that yes, you can. You can pet Nyx, you can pet other random creatures that you see around the area, you can feed them, you can even pet the Bantha, guys. You can pet the Bantha and it is the cutest thing I've ever seen. I think there were some animals I missed out on petting. However, these are just a few of them and oh boy, I'm... So excited to waste all my time petting Nyx and telling him how wonderful he is. Because he is the goodest boy. <laughs> is K Vess queer? Now, this is a very exciting question. I am not entirely sure. It has not been explicitly stated what K Vess identifies as. However, I did personally notice there was some little bits of flirtation with some of the other female characters, the female NPCs. There was one which I will show you in the gameplay where it kind of felt a little bit where she was a little bit nervous and she was like, oh, this is a very pretty woman. I'm so scared. So honestly, I can't answer this fully, but I will say that there are little hints. And I know that Umberly Gonzalez, the actor who plays k -Vess, is part of the LGBTQIA plus community. So who knows? Maybe we'll find out more about that in the game. Maybe not. But I'm excited to see for myself. So honestly, I'm glad you asked that question. So thank you. <laughs> can I customize k -Vess and can I customize Nyx? I'm here to tell you that yes, you can. There are plenty of different clothing options that you can purchase or that you can earn through Syndicate Clans. So 
Again, there's not very much that I can show you specifically regarding the Syndicate clothing items. However, I will tell you that they do have stats to them and depending on your approval level with each Syndicate, they will reward you with different items of clothing or different accessories for your weapon or even accessories for Nyx, which I saw some of the options and i will tell you they are the cutest thing i've ever seen in my life and i really really wish that i could show you guys that but unfortunately for now i cannot i will tell you that there are some outfits that are very heavily inspired by sabine which is pretty awesome there are hoth inspired outfits which includes a little scarf for nyx and i oh boy i cannot wait for you guys to see that because i almost cried at how cute he was but items do have stats to them which is very exciting even the ones that you can purchase from specific marketplaces and vendors they will give you advantages such as gaining a large amount of adrenaline when performing stealth takedowns uh greatly reduced damage taken from explosions when crouched rolling or sliding and many many more also each of your outfits can add up and give extra boosts or bonuses if you wear them as a full set which i think is pretty cool as well i'm not sure the advantages if you can mix and match different outfits or the kind of idea that that's going to be but we'll see as we explore more into the game I was asked whether the hair and the face is customizable. I highly doubt the face is customizable. It's different with Cal Kestis because you have options for different types of beard. You can change his hairstyle. I am not entirely sure if you can change KVS's hairstyle. However, her hair is pretty as it is. And she has her little data spike in her hair, which she uses in game, which I will show you in a bit. Are there mini games to play? And yes, there is. So I've already mentioned a little bit of this, but you can play games such as Sabak, such as Fathier Racing, where you bet on the Fathiers. There are little arcade machines where you can shoot down TIE Fighters. There are also little mini games to use if you want to hack, slice, lock pick things. I'm pretty sure these options can be turned off or can be given a much easier difficulty. The first one I really, really enjoyed, which is kind of like a Star Wars Wordle in a way, but with pictures, so you have to match up each of the pictures in a certain order to get access to, say, a, a data pad or a computer screen. I enjoyed this a lot because, it, again, it's just a game of guessing and trying to figure out the right order for things. There are levels of difficulty with them. You'll have ones where it's just a chain of three pictures or there's some that have a chain of maybe five or six and you have a certain amount of tries to do it within. The other one, however, I'm not the biggest fan of. So the data spike to lockpick into doors and chests. It's basically a rhythm game and it, you know, lights up. It has a noise which you have to match with your controller. And I really, really struggled with this. Again, I'm pretty sure there are options to change this or to turn it off or to make it easier, which I most likely will do because I find it very time consuming because I do not have a very good reaction time and my hand-eye coordination is not very good either so while some of the options were easy where it would be like one beep and then one beep some of it would have beep beep and then a space and then beep and I just couldn't keep up with it personally but I like the idea that they went with for it I think it's cool but I will be using the options that make it easier or to turn it off personally but again it's cool. It's a new version of lockpicking that we don't have. Every game always has very similar lockpicking styles. And honestly, I'm not a fan of any game's lockpicking at this point. Like, I always get so frustrated with it regardless of what game it is. So honestly, that's probably just a me thing. But it's up to you guys to play it however you want. And if you enjoy rhythm-based minigames, then this will be for you. Did you like the game? Is it fun? And what did you struggle with? So... Things that I personally struggled with were, again, like I said, the lockpicking aspect. And I also kind of struggled with finding the enemies. I'm sure there are plenty of accessibility options to change this to maybe highlight the enemies or to show where they're coming from. However, while I was playing, I did die quite often and I did get very confused and disorientated because I struggled to see where the enemies were. Maybe that was just because it was a very stressful moment. I was being watched by the the Ubisoft devs um and it was just all very 
it, it's pretty fast paced, honestly, once you get into fights with a big group of enemies. But there were some points where someone was shooting at me and I had no idea what angle they were coming from or could not see them at all. But that could just be a me thing. So that's something that I will need to figure out more into the game as I play. However, again, I only got to play a couple of hours of gameplay and not all of it was fighting. The other aspect of it that is interesting to me is the fact that it is very stealth heavy. So there are some aspects of it where you can do stealth or you can just run in and shoot people, but there are missions that you're locked into stealth and if you get caught, then you have to restart the mission, which I personally have never been a fan of stealth games. So to take as an example, Ghost of Tsushima, one of my favorite games of all time, it is very stealth based if you want, but there is also the option to just running guns blazing kind of thing. And that is how I played it. I played it to the point where I just kind of ran in. I would do some stealth here and there to just get a jump on people. However, I I didn't really make very much use of the stealth aspect. It's the same in Baldur's Gate 3, very different play style. However, a lot of people for that will use the sneak options. And I personally don't because I just like to run in and just murder everybody and I like having fast-paced gameplay and I find it more fun personally so I feel like I may struggle a lot with the stealth required missions but again we only got to play a couple of very brief missions so I'm not sure how heavily it's going to rely on that but that is that is my take on the game on the things that I'm not a big fan of personally so if you're not very good with stealth you might be on my side of things with that however if you are an assassin's creed player for example i have only ever played one assassin's creed game and that was black flag so i spent most of my time on the pirate ship and exploring i didn't really do very much fighting so i'm not entirely sure if assassin's creed is locked in stealth or not however i feel like it's definitely gonna have a lot of similarities to those games with the stealth aspect so if you enjoy those games then i would say this is definitely the game for you Overall though, I did have a lot of fun. I enjoyed being able to walk around the place. I enjoyed being able to hop on my speeder whenever I feel like it. I enjoyed flying through space. And yeah, I had, I really like the game so far. It's too early to say how much I'm gonna like it, but based on what I've played, yeah, I had a good time. I really had a good time playing and I, the time went so quickly, which is always a good sign. Which syndicate is most powerful? So I am not entirely sure which is going to be most powerful. However, I am very excited about the different options that you have between each syndicate, between each clan, and having the option to choose which you want to side for. So in my gameplay, we did have the option to choose sides between the Pikes and the Crimson Dawn. And of course, as a lover of Kira, I chose Crimson Dawn because to me, they are really cool and the pikes not so much however i kind of started to regret my decision through the gameplay as there was missions where i had to sneak into pike bases and they are very unforgiving um the pikes are very scary and having the option though does have its benefits there was a part that i needed to steal for a mission and it was in the crimson dawn base but because i sided with crimson dawn I have a good reputation with them. My approval by them is good. So I was able to just walk straight into their area and sneakily grab what I needed. However, if it was in the pike area, I would have to sneak around, I'd have to use Nyx, and I'd have to be very, very, very careful. Otherwise, I would start a very, very, very big fight, which you don't really want to do because I will lose even more approval and it'll just get more difficult and more dangerous. So I am not entirely sure which syndicate is going to be the most powerful or which is going to be the best to side with. They each have their own advantages for, again, each level of reputation that you go up. So, for example, if you have a bad reputation with them, they are going to hunt you down. You're not going to be allowed in anywhere. They're going to chase you. They're going to try and kill you. You're going to lower your reputation even more, honestly. All I can say is good luck. <laughs> If you have a good reputation with them, you know, they will allow you into their areas, their territories. You're not allowed to steal, of course, so if you're caught doing that, then your reputation is going to go down. You know, the, the members will trust you more and they might give you more jobs to do, with, which gives you more opportunities to earn more things. 
and probably to find out more information. They will give you discounts in their merchant stores. You will get gifts, like I said, with the clothing options, which have specific stats and specific looks for that clan. Every clan should have different versions of clothing and different advantages. So it's basically down to you to decide what you prefer and what advantages suit your gameplay best. Can you walk around the ship? Yes, you can. And the ship is massive. It's a really, really nice design. There are workbenches that you can use around there. There's little areas that you can pet nicks in. And you will be able to customize your ship, which is called the Trailblazer. You will be able to customize your speeder. I kind of wish I spent a little bit more time exploring this ship to its fullest. I'm now wondering if there was the opportunity to maybe speak to ND5 while you're in there or what other options there would be. So honestly, that's going to be one of my main things once I get into the game again, is exploring the ship, every little nook and cranny of it, because I want to know more. I want to learn everything about it. Obviously not related to walking around the ship, but again, I will say, as I said earlier, the ship controls feel really nice. I know that there is options for making flying easier, such as avoiding obstacles, and you can invert your controls if you need to. I find it really fun, really easy to use, and someone also did ask me if you can walk around the ship while you're in space. I didn't try it, so I don't know, but it would be interesting if so. But again, you are in control of the ship the entire time. You're in control of taking off, you're in control of flying, you're in control of landing. So I don't know if there's any time to walk around the ship while you're in space, honestly. But from what I saw, there is some data pads in there. There's the wardrobe, there's the workbench for your blaster. And I'm sure there'll be many, many more things. There is also a toilet. It's not usable, but it's there. It exists. So at least we know that, you know, there's somewhere to go if we need to. <laughs> that was definitely an interesting find. <laughs> Can we play as MD5? Now, I have absolutely no idea on this. On our first part of the game with the three R's on Tushara, we didn't have ND5. He was not our companion yet, so I am not entirely sure when he comes into the story, but we did not have access to him. And then in our second mission on Kojimi, we did have ND5 on the comms. However, we didn't get to see him. We didn't get to spend time with him. I am not sure if he will ever be controllable or if he plays a part in actual gameplay i know that he helps you over the comms in the section that we played but that's all i know so far on nd5 but i am so hyped to see more about him because he apparently has such an interesting story and jay rincon the actor for nd5 is very very excited for us to experience more of this droid apparently his character arc is incredible so that's something to really look forward to i love the story aspect of games i love character development that's what kind of gets me roped into something is characters and their development so knowing that there's going to be development for this badass droid in a duster jacket hell yes yeah, sign me up finally a bx droid that i'm not terrified of because they are very scary they're very mean they're very flexible they're very fast so it's gonna be interesting teaming up with one and actually probably feeling emotions for them rather than just trying to run away scared <laughs> so yeah for now i think that is enough questions that i've answered if you guys have any more questions i'll be very happy to answer them in my discord or on my twitter or on instagram or if you guys want me to make another video i happily will again i will be streaming this on twitch once it releases on the 30th of august and i will be uploading different aspects of the gameplay to this channel and full entire vods to my side channel which is linked in my bio but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so so much to ubisoft for this invite for this opportunity to get to play the game to experience it and the opportunity to talk about it and to share with you guys some of the awesome gameplay that i got to record and yeah as always i will see you guys in the next video so peace and may the force be with you